let's talk about approval system so approval system also is optional and can be configured through our configuration page so whenever a timesheet or a expense sheet gets uh, saved into the database it gets into the into the new state and then when it's submitted it gets the submitted state and when it is submitted the uh, submitter or the approver can uh, do an unsubmit when they do an unsubmit it'll go back to the new state uh, the approver can approve a timesheet then it when it's approved it gets the approved timesheet uh, he can also reject the timesheet the submitted timesheet if he sees something wrong or some incorrect values are there or if he doesn't uh, want to approve he can actually reject when it's rejected it goes back and it to the to the team member for uh, further uh, correction and resubmission and email notification or notification also will be sent to the team member and one other thing one it's once it's approved you can actually the approver can actually unapprove which will take the time sheet back to the submitter uh, state let's just quickly see how approval system works time expense so we have already got two uh, three time sheets two of them in new state and uh, one is already in submitted state so so go on edit so so if you save it'll only keep saving it it won't submit so so in order to submit this time sheet you have to click on the submit button when you click submit you will oh there is a minimum hour check it didn't pass through so so since it i mean we have we have a configuration saying enforce minimum hours and then um, uh, and i've entered 8 as minimum hours so so that's why it's not passing it's not letting you to submit no all of them are 8 till this shit go to fine okay so when you click submit it's going to come up with this uh, uh, a pop up with an acknowledgement message and that actually is defined in the admin screen in the configuration page right here so so submission acknowledge text whatever text you have here which will what that's what will get popped up as an acknowledgement message before submission so if you have this empty you won't get an acknowledgement uh, pop up So when you submit, you will get this acknowledgement pop up. When you click OK, it's going to go to submitted state. So this this time sheet is also submitted. Let's go to the uh, to the approver login or the manager login, and then see what's going on there. So you will see this this time sheet is what was submitted by the by Chandra. the team member and this actually comes to the manager here so the manager actually can open the time sheet and uh, do a review and he can, he one, once it's submitted nobody can edit not um, the approver nor the submitter can edit uh, uh, a submitted uh, time sheet it needs to be done submitted to actually to be to be ready for it uh edit again so right now this is in submitted state you can see the right at the top and the user of the time sheet and then uh, since there is no purchase order here you don't see it and then these are the three actions the approver can uh, do or manager can do so if he says approve time sheet is approved uh, go back to the go back to the members login and then press so so, so this time sheet is approved so once approved 
also you cannot you cannot edit that at all so you can only do a view so once uh, once it's approved you can uh, manager can actually unapproved too so let me go to the manager slot in So this particular time sheet was approved by the manager. So I'm going to go into the time sheet. That time sheet can be unapproved. So if you do an unapproved, it'll go back to the submitted state. it was unapproved so it comes back to submitted state so uh let's so the week of uh 9th is actually come back to submitted state so now if you want to make some changes and submit again you can Oh okay you know what submitted also you cannot edit so so if you want to make really make some changes you have to unsubmit and then make change so i'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, yeah let's do an unsubmit when you do an unsubmit it goes back to the new state where you can actually edit that back to the submitted state now now the manager can uh, so it is in submitted state now so he goes and opens it for review again now he can actually reject this uh, time sheet say reject it'll ask for a reason why you are rejecting this the was seems to be incorrect please please submit so now this particular time sheet has been rejected by the manager so it gets a state of rejected so let's go back to the team members login you will see the week of 9th is actually in rejected state so rejected is more or like uh, goes back to the new state where you can edit so so you can correct your hours and uh, submit again so so these are the actions or this these are the activities of an approval uh, system uh, time sheets uh, when they are created are in, in the state of new uh, when they are when they are submitted it goes to submit third state and a submitted time sheet can be approved or rejected uh, a submitted time sheet can be unsubmitted to go back to new and uh, an approved time sheet also can be unapproved to go back to uh, submit state so i guess we have covered the approval system and also the demo hopefully it is uh, clear to you guys Reject uh, team member. 
okay and there is also another feature in here is called email notification for non submission I'll just quickly uh, show you how that can be set so on the configuration page there is something called send email for non submission so if you have this checked it will send email for non submission and for that to happen you have to set a submission deadline right now we have said uh, sunday uh, hour 23 uh, that is 11 pm so that is the deadline for submission so if you don't submit um, by then an email will be sent and the text for that email can be specified here that's uh, that's the non submission email uh, feature okay okay all right we've covered the 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 core uh, uh, feature or the functionality of the plugin we're going to talk about some settings first let's look at uh, the redmine settings and how they impact the uh, plugin first thing i want to talk about is issue visibility this is on the this is on the time sheet uh, and the issue drop down in the time sheet let me go to this uh, time sheet so you you have a you have a project and uh, and the corresponding issues here so this is what gets uh, affected by the issue visibility uh, change or uh, configuration so to uh, do the issue visibility can be actually done from the permissions page so go to administration roles and permissions and then you pick your role and then this is there's a drop down for issue visibility so there are three uh, choices for the for the issue visibility one is all issues that means all issues uh, are visible in the drop down in the time sheet and all non private issues this will show only non private issues private issues won't be uh, can be used for in the time sheet and when you say issues created by or assigned to that means only those issues which are assigned to or created by you will be visible in the time sheet so so that is the issue visibility uh, configuration and the start of the week i think we have already discussed this so you can ch change the start of the week for either saturday sunday or monday or you know, based on user languages and that can be done from settings display start calendar so these are the two uh, redmine settings now we'll just jump into the uh, plugin settings uh, plugin settings can you uh, do it by administrations plugins configure there are some display settings you can change uh, so you can change the width of the drop down in the time sheet in the in here so if you notice the width of prior project uh, right now the width uh, right now the width uh, with the project drop down width is set to 150 pixel issues 250 and activity 75 so that's why you see them in uh, uh, different sizes so if you want to actually change this uh, change this uh, activity drop down size you can actually change it change it so right now i think it is 75 i'll change it to 175 and then apply so when you change it so this, this activity drop downs width will change that the drop down width has changed from 75 to 175 so that is the display the drop down width and there is also show work time header actually what that is 
some people don't like this uh, work time header so those so they may not use it and by default it's not checked so you will not see the work time header so check the work time header so when you have the work time header checked you will see a header in the you will see a header in the in the time sheet so this is the header i was talking about so it'll, you can actually specify the start start time of the day 8 am let's say you work till 5 pm that day so it it does the uh, it tells you how many hours you actually work that day 9 hours and then uh, and then it will tell you, you charge you 0 hours for that day and you have 9 hours left. Uh, I actually put that on a Sunday so it's not that uh, helpful. Let me do this here. So I start that uh, work on 9 o'clock and then I went up to 6 p.m. So I worked 9 hours that day and I've charged 7 hours. I still have 2 hours to charge. So. So this work time header pretty much gives you the uh, lets you enter start time, end time, and based on that, it'll calculate the total time you worked, and uh, and uh, it also tells you the remaining hours how much how much you need to you, you, you need to charge. One one caveat with this is the, all these uh, start time, end time, they're not actually persisted or saved in the database. So, so you have to keep entering this every time you open up a timesheet. So that may be a little annoying, but if, you, if you're only uh, if you only open the timesheet one time and you just submit in one shot, then this will really come uh, handy. And yeah, since because because it takes up space and looks the timesheet a little ugly, a lot of people don't uh, like it and use it. So, so if you don't want it, you can actually uncheck the uh, header. So that sh that should. Uh, take them away from the timesheet that is the display settings and the export settings will come back at the end then uh, we talked some of these approval system settings let me go so approval system settings are right here so uh, you can first of all like I said it's optional so if you, if you if you don't have this checked use approval system then approval system will never be used for for the plugin and you won't see all those buttons submit approve unapprove reject uh, unsubmit you won't see any of those buttons all you'll see is just the save button that's it uh, and so if you are using approval system and you don't you don't have time to actually review and approve timesheets on or uh, then what you can do is you can say auto approve timesheets that means system will automatically approve a timesheet when somebody submits it so that uh, if you really if you want to use the approval system and you really don't have time or don't have a dedicated manager to review and approve then you can use this uh, feature and the other thing is approver can approve their own timesheet in 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 some cases when your top boss who who is a top top guy and he doesn't have any any person to report to or so he, he when he submits a timesheet there will be nobody to approve his timesheet uh, in that case his timesheet will just stay in submitted state forever and nobody can really approve it so that's when this is helpful so he can submit and approve his own timesheet and other thing other settings I think we discussed during our presentation itself so let me just go back that is the approval system 